thanks for coming back and watching another one of my videos. If you're new, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know when new videos come out, which is all the time. We're going to get into some tires and wheels on how to build your very own e-bike. Welcome to Velo Mobile Shop. My name is Kyle Chidock and I own an e-bike store. I like to make electric bikes better. So this is the stage the bike should be at now. Uh, we are going to set this to the side for the moment. We have a few things we need to do with our wheels and tires so that way they're prepped and ready to install on the bike. The first thing to do with our wheels is to get the rim strip on. I'm assuming you're buying a completed wheel. Uh, wheel building could be a totally separate course all on its own. So we're not going to cover that. Maybe we'll dive into that at some other time. Uh, but for now I'm going to assume that you're buying your wheels and your motors, in this case a hub motor, uh, complete and ready to go for your bike. So the rim strip protects your tube from getting any holes or punctures from any of the sharp edges on the rim. And on the fat bike rims, it kind of also protects it from anything on the outside because as you can see, there's cutouts in this rim. Uh, because the rim's so wide, they do that to save weight typically. Um, so as an added benefit, you can choose the color of the rim strip and you can see it through there and make some cool color combinations for your bike. So if the rim strip doesn't slip on easily, some do and some don't, here is the trick that I do to get it to go on. So we're going to use a different wheel and rim strip that is tighter. So first thing you want to do is find the hole in the rim strip where the valve stem goes. There we go. And then you want to find the hole right here on the rim. So we're going to match those up. And what I do is take an old tube and just cut a section out of it. And if you don't have an old tube, you could also use a small bolt with a nut on it or something, but this makes sure that nothing gets scratched up. So we put that through, screw the cap on just because then it can't fall out on us. And now what we can do is take a tire iron and just run it all the way around the edge and just seat that rim strip right on. Now what will happen if you don't have this in is while you're going this way, this end on the other side will want to slip off. So it makes it hard and you got to use a couple of hands to get it on there. Um, but with this method, you can use a single tire iron, like I said, run all the way around. I'd probably do this on a, a flat surface on a table to make it easier. And, and then you can actually get that to pop on. Now we're going to go ahead and put the tube and the tire on. When the tube shows up, it's probably going to be like this with basically no air in it at all. So it's easiest if you put a little bit of air in the tube first. You can either use a standard bicycle pump like this, or you can use an electric pump. I have this one because fat tires have a lot of volume of air. So if you're using a hand pump, it can take quite a while to get it pumped up whereas this one can take just a few seconds. So that's really handy to have uh, when you're filling your tires up for the first time or just after repairing a flat or something like that. I do, of course, carry a small hand pump for trails when I'm out riding so I don't get stranded, but I know from experience that it takes a lot of pumping to get that tire filled back up. So let's put a little bit of air in this tube. I'll show you about how much I like to get in there and then I'll show you my preferred method of getting the tire of the tube onto the rim. Okay, now I've got some air in the tube. You can see I put just enough that basically it holds its tube shape, but it's still really flimsy and floppy, so not a lot of pressure at all. And what I do is take the tire. Now we're using a 100 millimeter rim with a four inch wide tire. You can go wider than that on this frame. 
Um, the fork is kind of our limit on clearance, so it does a little bit better with a four inch. So I put the tube into the tire first. Now, you'll want to look at your tire. Look on the sidewall and see if you have an arrow that shows you the direction that the tire is supposed to go. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, you could also look at the tread and sometimes you can kind of get an idea that way. But make sure you know which way the tire is going first. And then you want to grab your wheel and make sure that you have the right direction there. Now this Bafang motor, nicely enough, also has an arrow. So that makes it really easy. But the other thing you can look at is we have our mounts for our brake disc that we haven't put on yet. Brakes always go on the left side. So let's pretend our bike is facing this way. We've got our brakes on the left. We have our motor cable on this side, and that's not universal, so some motor cables are on the left side as well. Uh, we have some threads right here. That's where our freewheel is going to go. So we know that this is the direction of rotation, and this is gonna be the direction for the tire. So now that we know we have the direction lined up, Let's take the valve stem here, find the hole, which is over here. Let's match those up. And then I'm going to put the cap on to hold it in place. And with fat tires, uh, you have a lot of wiggle room because the tire is so wide, you can actually just push the tire on by hand. So I kind of push one side on, push the tube on, and then we can take the other side and work it on as well. Now if this is a thinner tire, that'd be a bit more difficult. And then you're gonna take a tire iron and run that all the way around to get that bead set in there. And there we go. So now we're ready put some more air in there. Normally at this point, this is where I'd use my little electric pump, but so you can hear me and see this process a little bit better, I'm going to use the hand pump, well, a foot pump rather. So we'll put this onto our stem, get that hooked up. and we'll start pumping it up. Now with fat tires, and really any tires, but particularly the fat tires, I find that it's easy to get the tire a little bit lopsided. So as you pump it up, you get a little bit more pressure in there. What I like to do is kind of move it around Give the tire a little push here and there and get it, make sure that it's seated on all the way around. And fat tires are good for about 20 PSI maximum. Depends on the tire a little bit, but that's typical. So you've got a high volume of air at very low pressures, which makes for a very soft and comfortable ride. And that's one of the advantages. You also have a lot of traction because the tire is so wide. And then you can ride on some surfaces like snow and sand that other tires just can't do. So we're getting a little more pressure in there now. Rotate it around a little more, make sure it's seated on nicely. And like I said, low pressure. So this may seem like it's got a lot of pressure in it, but we're only up to about 15 PSI. And we're gonna leave it right there. Now, of course, you're just gonna repeat the process for the front wheel. We've got our rim strip on, we've got our tube and our tire on. Next, let's put our brake disc on. There is a small arrow, usually, on the brake disc telling you which direction it goes. We're just going to slip that on here, take the included bolts. Now one thing that's really important on these 
you can see these bulbs have been prepped with some blue Loctite. It's very important, for obvious reasons, that your brake disc does not come loose. Uh, one, your brakes could fail, um, but also if, if it comes loose, it could just cause other damage on your bike. So, really good idea to have Loctite on those. That makes sure that brake disc is never going to work loose. So, I'm loosely putting these in first. And make sure to go easy on these when you get started to make sure you don't strip the threads in your hub motor because that would be an expensive mistake. So we're just going to gently start these. Make sure they're going in nicely. Okay, now once we're confident that our threads are good, everything's lining up the way it should, we want to tighten these down in a nice star pattern. That way you get a good, even setting. I like to use my little DeWalt 12 volt drill to do that, and I tone it down just a little bit so I'm not wrenching on it, so I don't strip either the head of the, the, uh, the, head of the bolt, or, like I said, strip the actual threads. Okay, now our bolts are in nice and tight, and we can do the same thing for the front wheel. Next, we're going to install the free wheel onto our rear wheel, which is also our hub motor. I want to make sure I'm clear about what a free wheel is, because a free wheel and a cassette get confused often. So, here's a free wheel. For the most part, they'll all be in one piece like this. On the inside here, you can see that it's threaded. And our, if you look at our motor, you can see the threads on the outside where that will turn on to. Um, now a cassette is different in that basically it has splines going this way, so the gears slide on. Sometimes it's a, it's a cluster of several gears, and then the last two or three go on separately with some spacers. Uh, the tool you use to tighten that down looks something like this. See so it has these little splines that match up. Now this tool is also handy for the free wheel. We don't need it to tighten down, uh, but if you ever wanted to remove this, basically you insert this right here, turn it to the left, and that loosens it up. Because if this was installed on the bike and you tried to turn the gears themselves, you could see they would just spin and that wouldn't get you anywhere. Uh, now to tighten it down, uh, we have what's called a chain whip, and I'll show you that when we actually go to put this on. Here we are again with our rear wheel, and you can see again the threads where this is going to go on. And this is one of those things that's really critical that you start it correctly. You want to make sure that lines up and you're not damaging any of these threads. Now we have this cable to deal with. Uh, this cap right here is probably going to get in our way, so we're going to pop that off, and this the hole is large enough to slide over the cable and over that nut and those washers right there. So then we just want to look at it from this angle. I like to see it from the top down because you can kind of see if it's straight and then just gently start screwing that on and it should go on nice and easy. There we go. Now once it's on and it feels snug, to get it a little bit tighter, we can take this tool, like I said, that's called a chain whip. Basically the chain acts as our, uh, kind of our wrench, and then we can, you can see we just tightened it just a little bit more. And that's it. So, not going to spin that way, because of course we want it to pull the wheel around when we pedal, but it free wheels in the other direction. Okay, things are starting to get exciting now because we have a wheel that is ready to install on our bike. Now the rear wheel has a motor in it 
and it's going to apply a lot of torque into our frame. Uh, not so much that we need torque arms, which are an extra metal piece that can be installed to beef up the frame. Uh, we're using a 750 watt motor, uh, and although it does have a really good amount of torque, it's not enough to worry about that. I haven't had any trouble with that. Once you go up to a, you know, a thousand watt or more motor that's geared and has a lot of torque, that would be a good idea to install some torque arms here and there. Basically, it just adds some reinforcement to the frame so this portion can't be stripped. Because what we have is, on our motor, an axle that is flat on two sides. I'm going to turn it around and show you the cable side closely. So we have here this axle flat on two sides. That's going to drop into the flat opening into the frame. Now you'll notice the cable, actually, there's a notch on one side for the cable to come out. The reason for that is if it was sticking straight out and that notch wasn't there, any time you were to bump this cable on anything, if you drop the bike on its side, it's basically going to cut your motor cable right off, making for a difficult repair. So be aware of that. Make sure that it's sitting to the side like this. I'll show you which direction I like to run it really depends on your bike whether you should have that run up or down. So I like to have it pointing down. So the other thing to note is this washer here. We have those on each side and there's a little notch on the washer. So that's going to go at the, the bottom of the frame. Keep in mind our frame is upside down. And basically that helps to keep this axle from spinning in the frame. So we have one on this side, that's going to go on the inside of the frame. Turn this around. We have another one on the inside of the frame on this side. Then we have a large washer and a nut, and we have a washer and a nut on the other side. So let's turn this the way it needs to go, make sure everything's lined up. And we're just going to take make sure we have this washer on the inside on both sides kind of rotate that axle until it drops into the frame and then give it a little pressure make sure that it's seated down in there and uh, even eyeball it right underneath make sure you don't have a funny gap or anything there and make sure it's sitting all the way down in then we can take and tighten this down on this side and basically even though there's a cable there we're doing the same thing on the opposite side. Slide the washer all the way on, then tighten the nut all the way down. And like I said, on the cable side, I have that notch opened upward. Maybe if I pull this off, I'll be able to see it. So the cable is going to go like this. And you'll see how that runs once we get ready to hook up some wires. But for now, what you can do is grab a wrench. Here's our 18 millimeter wrench. It's not a very common size. In fact, I bought a metric wrench set once and it skips 18. It goes from 17 millimeters up to 19. So you may have to buy just that 18 millimeter wrench, uh, but it's a handy thing to have. I wouldn't recommend using a crescent wrench on these nuts. It's just a little bit too easy to, to strip them because you want to get these nice and tight. Once you have this nice and tight, we can put that kickstand back down out of the way. We can move over to the front. Keep in mind we've got a lot of weight on the back here, so it can be a little tipsy in that direction. And we have a quick release for the front, so no wrench needed. We just make sure to slide that into our dropouts, just loosen it enough to get in. There we go. So you get the nut on this side somewhat snug until when you move the lever on the opposite side, it's nice and tight. And that way your front wheel is not going to go anywhere. Now, be mindful of a couple things. One, always put the lever on the opposite side of your disc brake. Um, I've seen it uh, happen, I've done it myself. If your lever's on this side, if you just went down a really long hill and heated up your brakes, uh, it's actually possible to burn yourself on your brake if you're going to reach the lever. Uh, what I've had is more likely, 
is you go to undo the lever and you can even cut yourself on the disc brake. So put it on the other side, that just eliminates any possibility of that happening. Now the other thing to do, I'm going to turn the bike around for just a second to show you. Now that I've got it turned around so you can see this side, uh, I recommend putting your lever either facing up like this, you know, you could fa face it back this direction a little bit depending on the fork, um, but up like this is a safe place to put it. If your lever is pointing straight down, you'll never know while riding, is your lever pointing straight down because it's supposed to be, or is it pointing straight down because it came loose and my wheel's about to fall off. Pointing forward, if you get a small branch or a stick or something off the trail, it happens to catch your front wheel, it could actually hit your lever and open it. By putting it this direction, you eliminate the problem of that happening. Only one thing to do now, well, there's a lot more than one thing, but one thing to do right now in this moment, and that is flip the bike over. So let's turn it over. We can put our kickstand down, and you can take a moment to sit back and admire your work. If you've been building and following along at the same time, congratulations, you're doing an awesome job. Give yourself a little pat on the back. It always feels really good to have a bike that's on two wheels, and it actually is starting to look like a bicycle. So, always feels really good to get to this stage. There is a lot more work to do, but just give yourself a little congratulations for making it this far and keep up the good work.